Hi, I'm Jamie. Welcome back with the Law 2.0 Conference. Would you like to introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about the work you're doing? Yes, my name is Philip Grant. I'm the principal law clerk to Justice Larry Martin, Kings County Supreme Court uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome on the conference. And you are a Law 2.0 honoree this year. Yes. How does it feel to be honored for all your accomplishments? Feels great. Uh, awesome. <laughs> well, welcome on in here again and congratulations. Is there any advice you'd like to give somebody who might want to be getting into the same field as you? Yes, uh, and I, I didn't get a chance to actually say what we do in the Kings County Supreme Court. I did want to mention that uh, we're responsible for the commercial part of the court, which is the business to business lawsuits and the largest cases. Uh, so the commercial division was created specifically to handle the most, the largest and most difficult cases, and that's where uh, we preside, where justice presides, and where I assist him as his uh, chief legal counsel. Uh, we also are responsible for foreclosure cases. Uh, so there are tens of thousands of, of uh, foreclosure cases. It's the busiest part, probably the New York State court system. So uh, there is a uh, referee that assists actually conducting hearings, but we're responsible for uh, overseeing uh, all foreclosure and commercial cases. Sounds good. I like the elaboration on that there for us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, back to the advice part. Then, any advice for people I, that might want to get into that same type of sector of law? I do. Well, it's, so it's a it's a long process. Uh, becoming an attorney, first of all, is a long process, and it's a. I, I like to tell young attorneys that it takes about. Uh, well, you come into law school. You, you, you've done well to get into law school. Uh, then you're surrounded by people who have also done very well and you have to start all over again. It's very competitive. Uh, then when you finish, the bar exam is very, very competitive. Sometimes I say uh, that if you're the smartest person in the world and you work as hard as you possibly can, which most of us are not one of the, or the other, uh, you'll probably know about 60% of what a, what's on the bar exam. So it's as much a test of your ability to function under pressure. A lot of people can't function with that uncertainty. And uh, so it's a, it's a very rigorous uh, process. And then it takes about five years of practicing before you really uh, ha have an idea of what you're doing <laughs> to be an attorney. It's, uh, uh, it's a long process. Uh, being an attorney used to be, uh, until the early 1900s, uh, just an apprenticeship. Georgetown, my alma mater, was actually the first law school. And not until the early 1900s, did you actually attend law school? That before that, you practiced with a, an attorney, and when the attorney thought you were ready, you took over the, the business. But uh, it takes about five years of practicing to really start be, being an attorney, in my opinion. Uh, the advice that I'd give, and uh, this is that I, what I think is the best advice that I ever got. Uh, I got it I, after I worked for the, I worked for a very large law firm, was actually the highest paying law firm in the country. Uh, uh, doing uh, in Washington D.C. doing uh, one type of law, and then I moved to Wall Street doing another type of law. And I think it was that, that second Wall Street firm that I had my first real mentor. And the advice that he shared uh, is what I'd like to share, uh, and it was this: uh, I have both advice for young lawyers, and then I have advice for anyone just on communication. Uh, any preference? <laughs> okay. So the advice, the attorney specific advice was, uh, as my mentor said to me, he said, you're a bright guy, possibly too good, bright for your own good. And he said, you want to show how smart you are, but what you don't understand is that what it takes you 10 hours to research, I already know. <laughs> so it's really just a, a, a opportunity for you to study and, and learn the business. But uh, he said the, the harder part of practicing law is learning how to handle facts. The law, this is my mentor, he said, I, I either know what it is already, or if I don't know what it is, I'll, I can make it up. But the harder part is learning how to articulate facts in the most succinct uh, manner possible. Uh, a lot of young lawyers don't this, know this. The correct terminology is facts are either material or immaterial. Issues are relevant or irrelevant, irrele but to know how to state the material facts in a succinct manner that includes everything that you need and excludes what you don't need. And that's the harder part of practicing law. And I absolutely 
uh, say the same thing. When I write uh, a brief, when I write a decision for a judge uh, that's intended to be published, uh, I usually spend uh, the greatest amount of time on the introduction and the conclusion. And I may rewrite it 50, 100 times to get it, to get it right. Uh, which that's good advice for anyone with writing, I think. Um, uh, writing what we'd call expository writing as opposed to poetry, it's a different process. But if you're writing for the purpose of explaining something, the introduction and the conclusion are the most important parts and you have to spend a lot of time on them. The, the advice that is just on communication in general, uh, this was said to me in the context of lawyering, but I believe it has much broader application to communication in general, uh, is that the, the first and second most important things to know in communication, in reverse order, are the second most important thing is that most people are honest. We default to honesty. If you ask someone the right question, they're usually gonna give you the, uh, an honest answer, even if it's only because lying takes work and most people are lazy and they just not gonna do it. So that's the second most important thing to know that most people are honest and if, and if you ask the right question, they'll probably give you an honest answer. If the type of person that doesn't give an honest answer, you'll know it in advance, you'll know it by now. So that's number two. The number one most important thing to know, which is vastly more important to know than that, is that nobody, absolutely nobody, ever, ever, ever says what they really mean. They don't say what they really mean a small percentage of the time because they're lying. That's a small percentage of the time that they don't say what they really mean. The rest of the time, they either don't know what they're talking about, <laughs> and that's a pretty large percentage yeah. of the time. <laughs> but even if they do know what they're talking about, language is not a science. It's a very imprecise. Math is the closest thing to absolute precision that we know of. Language is as far as you can get. We think, we think in terms, we think in concepts. So anything that you, when it's time you're having a conversation, you have ideas in your head that have to get translated into words that the other person has to then hear, that they may hear or not pay, pay attention to, but they have to hear and then translate into images in their head. So the only thing you can be certain of is that whatever is in your head is not gonna be the same thing in the other person's head. And the takeaway from that is to not focus on the words, focus on the ideas. Uh, what's the person trying to say? What's the point they're making? Uh, when we lawyers do a contract, it doesn't matter what is in the person's head. When you do a contract, it's the exact opposite. It doesn't matter what, you can't even say, this is what I meant. No, it says whatever it says. And the issue is whether, is how a third person will interpret that. Not what you intended, not what the other person intended. When you're not doing a contract, it's the exact opposite. It doesn't matter what the words are. And that's the best advice, particularly for young attorneys, whether it's a boss, whether it's a adversary, to learn how to focus on the point that's being made instead of getting wrapped up in the words. When people argue, you said this, you said that. It doesn't matter what the person said. Maybe they, maybe they changed their mind, maybe they used the wrong word, and you have to focus on the concept. So that's the advice. I love that. And like you said, definitely think it applies to everybody, not just in the law field, but everybody as a whole here. Have you been getting to mingle with everybody speaking of that from all the different sectors here in the country? I have met a lot of good people, yes, yes, awesome. different sectors. Awesome. Hope you've been having a great time here. I have. Congratulations on your award. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us here. Thank you. Thank you.